experience for us all. Uh, we were here before the first birds began to sing. Today we were brought together with the sense of the old, the new and the challenge of the future. With the three tohunga doing their karakia and bringing us in and making sure we move around the room in the right direction. At one stage the tohunga, the kaumatua stopped and they called out, what is the name of this house? And the answer to that was Nga Mokopuna Atani the grandchildren of the great Tani. Who is this house for? What's the next thing they called out? And the answer came that it's for the people to stand in. And so the reawakening this morning had ritual, and some of the leaders in that ritual, the Kaumatua, who were here running the prayers, uh, they just sent directly from some of the ones that were here uh, when they started the house back in the 90s. And part of the day, we had the reawakening, but part of the day was actually about handing over from the old Kaumatua, Don Rangi, uh, to the new one, Kura from local Iwis. And uh, is to reawaken all the spirits, um, all these carvings, because each of these carvings has a modi, a life force. And it's a pain acknowledgement when we came in. Today was significant because we had two stones from the Awakairangi River uh, that was placed here. Uh, at the feet of the main carving as we enter, called Tane, who climbed the heavens to receive the baskets of knowledge. That uh, connects to the stones, which represent the closest connection of the life force of the land. Now that we've, the Karaki has lifted everything, we've cleared the way for them, the reawakening now is for them to come in and make use of this building. It's a lovely building. They made this happen as a legacy uh, for the kind of shifts that Aotearoa New Zealand was making at the time. At the time there had been the insertion of the uh, treaty clause into the State Owned Enterprises Act which meant that the treaty was now core treasury business and for the first time in its history it was going to have to think deeply about its implications for the government's finances. In order to uh, make progress into the future we need to join with one another rather than separate from each other. I don't think other than Parliament House I don't know of any other government department that has a whanenui like this. I think it's unique. It's the only government organisation that I know of that um, actually has a beautiful whanenui like this. And I salute all those who are responsible. I first came in here before I joined the Treasury when uh, I was uh, shown around by the then Chief Executive. And without really telling me the history of the place, that I was just shown in here. And I thought, wow, this is... This is something special. The house is uh, over 20 years old. Uh, it comes from the last century, you know, so it's almost a relic. But being able to breathe life into it and use it in our everyday working life and meeting life, uh, I think it's a very special thing. I don't get back to my marae, my own marae, that often. I'm from the east coast, from a little place called Mahia. So it's really nice to come to a place like this, and just for me personally, and um, be able to remember and, and reconnect. For me to come back here today was very moving. Uh, working in the Treasury is a bit like being the Army, it never washes off, you're always a Treasury official. Also when the Wharanui was opened, uh, my daughter uh, played the role of the young virgin and uh, she's no longer with us and so today I was able to bring her wairua back here. Uh, and so I felt very personally engaged and involved with this reawakening of this beautiful Whara Nui. There are some powerful images here and there's a powerful set of protocols that we can find a way to bring a diversity to our thinking and to bring a, um, you know, kind of a shared vision of what a future in New Zealand looks like. There's a view outside of the Treasury that we're quite homogeneous, but actually we have people of all sorts of disciplines who come and join us. Uh, which encourages debate. And you come into this room and you know you're in a special place. And actually you, you, you know that this is just no ordinary meeting room. This is a place where we can really debate, 
you maybe have had a bit of a rough day or you just need to some quiet space and you can come in here and take a deep breath and reflect and go, yep, that's what we're going to do. Where they can have downtime, where they can chill out, where they can think, where they can just have conversations, where they can laugh, where they can enjoy themselves. A place that we can come together and have some really good discussions in an environment that I think helps to actually bring with it respect but bring also some relaxation where we can actually talk as equals. So this whare here um, symbolises the, the hard work of, of many that have put in a lot of the ideas or the actual hard work of actually stitching those tuku tuku panel there. So um, it's, it's pretty cool. But it's also a remembrance and a reawakening and reaffirmation of the legacy that they laid down. And what does that mean going forward from here? Well, helps you realise and reinforce the fact that what we're doing here is working to improve the living standards of New Zealanders. I mean, this place is about New Zealand. The carvings connect us right back to the signing of the treaty. While I wasn't here in the past to, to um, do the initial opening, um, I was here to, to do the reawakening of the whare and feel really special and be part of the, the family, the whānau of the treasury. It's a place with great mana, a place where people not only come to think and argue, but a place where they come to sit and reflect.